Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of BA Select Start. Base. There it is. Uh, we are back here today with another episode. Actually, this is kind of be going to be a little bit of a of a series. Um, before we get into the task at hand for today's episode, Dan, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. The task at hand. So, as many of you know, Dan and I we talked about this um, last time. Uh, WWE's uh, new executive producer, I believe. I don't know the guy's name by heart. But he set up that WWE 2K forum uh, on 2K's forum page. Patrick Gilmore. Uh, Patrick Gilmore, he set up that 2K forum for all of the fans to go on there. Uh, if you have an account, great. If you don't, you can create one. And they have little subcategories of what you of whatever it is that you want to talk about. If you want to tell them to add something in regards to roster or creations or match types or whatever... Uh, they are they're giving you the platform to do so. So roughly about two days ago, um, Patrick uh, Gilmore uh, put out um, this little um, this little list here, and it's actually that the I don't know if it's if this is all of it or if this is a section of it. I'm not sure, but uh, he sort of tallied up everything that everybody was requesting. And we have the top 49 things that are highly requested um, or are highly requested to be done for the next WWE game. So Dan and myself, uh, like I said, we have a little series going on here where today we're going to break down the first 10 things on that list. We're going to discuss it separately. Um, We're going to talk about if we agree with this, if we don't agree with this, if we're on the same page of all the other gamers out there, WWE gamers out there. And we're just going to stay on the same page. Yes, Dan, on the same yeah, page. Just, just a little cross promotion. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Which I guess now would be a good time. What he's referring to, in case you guys do not know, um, we actually have another podcast that we do, the Anything Wrestling Podcast, AWP. Uh, it is with myself, Dan the Man, and with our third colleague, The Commish. Uh, we sort of do that sporadically now, but go ahead and check it out. The full playlist is on my channel. Um, and also, uh, of course, we have BA Select Star, which is uh, purely for gaming. All right, well, let's get started. So we have the first 10 things up here. Again, this is the the first 10 things that were most voted for or requested for or talked about. And man, oh man, was I excited to see the first one. <laughs> Um, I'm right there, but I'm right there with you because the second thing on this list is something that I've been requesting for as well, but let's go in order here. So the first thing that we have with the most votes, I think by a landslide. By a ton, yeah. Yeah. Um, the first thing that we got here is everybody's talking about the reinsertion of GM mode. I know how excited you are about this, Dan, so I'm going to let you take over. Go ahead. What do you think about this? I, so... I mean, the, fir- the first thing to acknowledge is I-, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of this clamoring is as a result of up, up, down, down, um, considering you had the Battle of the Brands uh, yeah. s- t- t- last year, and then you've got the, the second uh, season that they're doing right now, which, I mean, as fun as it is, I, I-, I- and I know they made tweaks, but... Uh, the, the problem with it is that it, it, it is fairly repetitious to just keep doing uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 06 over and over again. Yeah. So the idea that by the time they finish this season of uh, Battle of the Brands, they might uh, be able to play, play it on the, the next 2K game is pretty cool. Now, my hope is that they're going to take elements from it, but uh, expound upon it. I know during our last thing, I kind of talked about making sure that it's got, like, I think the 2006 is a great baseline. Yeah. But then if you take, like I said, the elements of 2007, where you picked specific storylines too, I I think that'll be a a nice, uh, nice game mode to play. But yeah, I think if they integrate that as sort of the, the, the mode at the heart of the game, um, 
because like I like I had said previously, you have to come out of the gate with something big, a big change for people to buy into this one again. Yeah. You can't just come come out with a another trash simulator and be like, "Hey guys, like we made a new one, we made changes, great." But you have to have some sort of marquee feature, and I think this and number two will definitely go a long way to winning back some fans. Yeah, definitely. Um, I agree with that. Um, if you're going to bring back the GM mode, honestly, there's a part of me that says if they were to just copy and paste, um, it would be okay. But I think that refining it, tuning it up, making it a little bit more modern wouldn't hurt either. Um, yeah. And I was also thinking about this. I also want it to be very interactive. All of these modes that they bring back, they weren't bad before, but I would like for them to be very interactive now. Um, mm. For example, in regards to this GM mode, I wouldn't want it to be, oh, just you just you get to choose who's on your roster, uh, you get to choose who's a face and a heel, and that's it. Everything else is moderated. I don't want that. Like I want this to be very hands-on. I want you to be fully in control of who you, who's on your roster, who's doing what, and essentially you have to be the booker. You have to be able to put on a very good show. Um, I, I, li- I like what you mentioned a second ago because that was I don't. It, it might have been an open feature, uh, but the the heel and face thing would be a cool addition to have in there because in '06 um, it was just book the show. It did the game didn't care who was your face and who was your heel. But I think that would be a cool element to incorporate because of the fact that then it could play into having your face be the one chasing the championship, then you could earn more ratings off of that because it's a, it's a realist. You want to talk simulations. That's one of the big things that uh, WWE steers for. Yeah. Absolutely. Faces are always chasing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one last thing. I think what would be very cool is if they do like um, what Xavier Woods and Tyler Breeze are doing, but if you take it online, where basically you and somebody yeah, else... Yeah, you could set up lobbies with other people. That'd be really cool. Yeah, exactly. You would have to basically put together a show, and depending on how much your show makes sense and how much of an impact you make, whoever gets the highest score as a general manager wins. Um, so that's something that I think could, again, sort of be tuned up for it to be modern and not just a copy and paste from a game from more than a decade ago. Um, and that, 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 that detail, I don't know if they, they would be able to really integrate that into this one, but if they can get everything else nice and clean, then the following year might be a great time to introduce that. But if they can pull it all together, by all means. Yeah. Again, I talked about how last time this was make or break for 2k. So, um, Again, if if you take everything to how it was before everything went downhill and fi- and fire a few surprises uh, along the way, I think you can definitely win most of your fans back. I thought uh, you were going to say fire, fire the team responsible for 2K20. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wouldn't be a bad idea either. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, let's jump into number two then. Number two, uh, one that I, fair to say that GM mode is to you as this is to me. Um, create a story. Your thoughts, Dan? Yeah, I mean, I I watched a video. I watched a video. Uh, I don't know if you sent it to me or if I stumbled across it on my own, but where a guy kind of critiqued the, or he he commented on the top five or ten things from uh, from this list also. Yes. But, uh, yeah, the, the concept behind this is also really cool in, in collaboration with the GM mode thing because especially if you can collaborate with other people, again, downloading other people's story creations. Um, I'd like this, like you kind of said, to be a highly interactive thing where... Maybe this lets us build one of those multi uh, arcing stories, and so then we can play it, we can send it to our friends, we can put it online, and people can download it. And essentially, it lets us author our own version of of uh, what the hell is it called? Uh, 
career mode where you start at a certain point in the story that some that we've written and then you get to a point where you can make four different choices if you're that that ambitious and depending on those choices then it branches off and i know some people won't won't put in that much effort they'll just want to make one nice linear story and that's fine too but if uh mario mario uh jesus what is it super mario maker yeah. on the wii u was any indication of people getting out of control with their creativity i can guarantee you that there will be be people in here who would make you a uh a no mercy level story mode. <laughs> yeah. Um, the ironic thing is, Dan, everything that you just mentioned that you would like to see implemented was actually what 2K14 was. 2K14 had all those features where you could have branching stories. You could upload it. You, you were could... able to branch them? Yeah, I absolutely. Um, again, that would take up a lot of time if you wanted a story to go in three different directions. So you would have to put that time in. Um, but if you just wanted to stick to one linear story, you also had that option. But it's still a creative outlet. So people will absolutely take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this mode, to me, is a must. Um, because let's face it, uh, exhibition mode is great, even if they bring back all the match types, which we'll get to in a second, is fine. But you also need all those bells and whistles to go along to, to complement the exhibition mode, to make the game complete. And to me, if they were to bring back the GM mode, and if they were to bring back create a story, you are easily giving your buyers something to do when they don't want to participate in exhibition matches. Um, yeah. And the best part about these modes is that you, it really allows for your creativity to flow and for you to step into the position of being the booker, of being the storyteller. Um, again, this for me is a must. I hope that they, again, if they just copy and paste it from 2K14, I will be more than happy. But if they make tweaks on it and make it a whole lot better than it was before, uh, that that's also fine with me. But the improvement of the gameplay, is that in the top 10 or was that be, uh, beyond the 10? Well, it says, uh, number 8 here says focus on gameplay. Okay, I, I just want to say, I was surprised that that was so low on the list and with so few votes compared to things like GM mode and that sort of thing. But yeah, even integrating GM mode and story mode, we need to, as far as I'm concerned, that should be like 4 or 5 at, at, at worst. Because you need to have a good gameplay to support that. Like, great, if we've got GM... Like, we don't want... I don't want to see the next 2K game be exclusively GM mode because the get, the gameplay sucks. Yeah. You want, you want something that's palatable. Yeah. Um, that's a very good point. Um... If the GM mode and the creative story mode is good, but then the fundamental is lacking, uh, that's where I go back to my point of gameplay should be your first focus. Core gameplay needs to be your focus first and foremost before you attach bells and whistles. Um, yeah. But before we get into that, let's move on to the third thing on the list. Revive missing match types. Uh, I know we dove into this last uh, in the last episode too, but uh, yeah, the, the things like uh, and, and in the video again, he referenced Inferno match, which honestly that one I don't care about. But things like Buried Alive, Special Referee, Slobber Knocker uh, matches, Slobber Knocker matches. The, the, <laughs> it's one of those things where, if I'm being entirely honest, I don't know why they ever remove a match. Yeah. <laughs> And um, I mean, it, you can even you can even bill it as like a legacy match or a um, le legends match, yeah. where it's like a retired match. We like we haven't seen a buried alive match in God, I don't know, eight years. Well, it's been, it's, are you counting the boneyard? I'm not. I'm excluding the boneyard okay. match because it's not like a buried alive match per se. But it was. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, before that, it's it's been years. Yeah. And so to like to put a match like that back in, like sure, put it in like a, a subcategory of matches. But like that, 
Uh, again, I talked about the brown panties matches and the fulfill your your fantasy matches. We can, we we can lose those because those are kind of outdated. Yeah. But inferno match, special referee match, uh, they should still be in there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, up until I believe two game two games ago, we also didn't have the match creator option. Um, to yeah. where let's say if you and I was so happy that they put this back in. To where, let's say if you were going to have a standard uh, six-man over-the-top rope battle royal, now you have the option of having it be uh, pinfall and submission. Um, Which I think is great because, again, that allows for more options, more gameplay. Um, And I do miss uh, certain matches like the slobber knocker matches and the old-school gauntlet matches. Um, So, but, I mean, I never even thought of that. Yeah, we talked about we talked about the three stages of hell, too. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Um, but you brought up a very good point that I actually didn't even think about up until you just said it. If they went through the trouble of implementing all these matches throughout the series, what was the intention of taking it out? I mean, yeah. I don't know if they're maybe going off of the fact that, hey, you know what, it's been a few years since anybody's seen a Buried Alive match. Okay, well, let's take it out. Um, which I don't understand. Why Why would you want to take it out, leave it in? Um, yeah, because you, you're going to have fans of that match. Like, I, it, is it my primary match to go back and play in 06 or 07 or whenever the, the hell the match was in there last that I played? But uh, I'll do it. Like, I, I think I when I was doing, because uh, it was in 06. Yes. And you could do it as a like a main event in GM mode, and sometimes I would play the matches in my GM mode. And so it has a role, it has a playability, so leave it in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, again. Plus it's, change, it's a change of pace, like you said, going into exhibition and playing single match, single match, single match. It gets boring. Yeah. If absolutely. I've got 28 different match types, it gives me variety. Yeah, and side comment, um, if we do get these matches, please get rid of those rollout features, because I just, I can't take it. Yeah, I think that trickles into the game, the gameplay thing. Yeah. There's, there's a couple of, like, I don't know if there's a breakdown in this whole forum about, like, which game features do you not want to see anymore? <laughs> Well, I mean, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be a bad idea if they kind of had, like, a multiple-choice forum, maybe in about a month or so. Like, okay, guys, here's what you wanted, and they kind of break it down a little bit more so that they know specifically what we do and do not want. Yeah. Um, but the fourth thing here, and I know, Dan, you spent a lot of time talking about this when you were saying, like, DLC ideas, but ongoing oh, live I, updates. I was hyped by that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because, um, because I went, oh man, I'm not the only one who's who's clamoring for this. I was actually shocked. Like a few of these things, I was like, oh, so a lot of people do share the same sentiments. Because I thought everybody was gonna kind of be on uh, different sides of the spectrum, but to know that a lot of people actually agree with us, uh, I think is a statement. Yeah. Um. But about the ongoing live updates, I think this bleeds into um, the whole thing. Like you were, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up Bailey because I think it's the easiest example to go to, where she was a face, and then the game comes out, and then she turns heel. She gets a haircut, she gets a new finisher, a new entrance. Uh, but oh, guess what? You're stuck with the old Bailey. Um, yeah. And even if they still want to be able to make money off of this, I talked about it before. If you uh, package like the the heel turn or a face turn of a of a certain character, and they have a new look, and they have a new entrance, and they have a new finisher and whatnot. Um, you can easily put that up on the on the PlayStation Store for like a dollar ninety nine, and go okay. Well, here you go. If you buy this, you get the old Bailey, and now you'll have the new Bailey as well. And that'll kind of give the game uh, an opportunity to be fresh until the next one comes out. Yeah, and that that's of course uh, presuming that they uh, that they continue with the whole microtransaction thing. Um, not my, it's not my, you know what I mean. But yeah, like like for example, I I come back when we talk about this to the, to Madden, which I busted out the other day. But like whenever 
uh, when the game was still being actively supported, I don't think Madden 16 is still really being updated. Right. But um, when they were actively doing it, if there was a roster change, somebody got traded, things like that, you didn't have to pay for an updated roster. They just said, here, this is now the most accurate version. Not to not to say like overwrite Bailey just because she changed her hair, but make that available to me. If they want to really take care of people, things like that, they may not even charge for, it. and then you can just have normal DLC packs. However, I also wouldn't be mad at them per se if they stuck to the whole, um, for lack of a better term, microtransaction format. Yeah, um, I mean, within reason. Of course, yeah. Um, would they do it for free? I think that for special 2K... I don't know if it's, if it's going to be 21 or 22, the next one. But um, if they... I mean, because of the disaster that was 2K20, I would say... <laughs> Just butter up the fans. <laughs> <laughs> um, because of that disastrous game, I think that for this one, they need to let it slide and be like you know what, we'll eventually charge for this, but as a way to say that, you know, to make up for what happened for from 2K20, um, here you go. Live updates. Like a, like a grand reopening of a store, how they would have some, some big sale. Yeah. You just do that with the game saying, hey, we're finally back, and here's some free shit to make up for it. Yeah. Um, but again, if they're charging a dollar ninety nine or whatever, I wouldn't be mad. Yeah, it's with not that. the end of the world. Yeah, exactly. Um, or if, as part of something like the accelerator, you'd like up up the price of the accelerator a little bit and include these ongoing updates for no additional charge. There you go. You're gonna have a bunch of people buy that. I mean, is there anything else in regards to live updates that you would also like to see in the next game? Something that doesn't have to do with a superstar being updated, but maybe something else. I, I mean, I, I touched on it a little bit last time about like if there's an if if we have a new arena show up like throughout the year, especially if if they they resume the yearly um the yearly format. Yeah. Give me the twelve arenas that we that we go through during the year for as as a free update. Yeah. Like here, here's that. Here's uh, Money in the Bank. Here's uh, Clash of Champions. Just give me those. That way, it gives me something fresh once a month. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm there with you. Um, a, a lot of the times, and I don't know what it is. It's almost like really bad timing where a game comes out and then a superstar decides to change their persona uh, entirely, and yeah. it just it sucks when you, you're you're stuck with playing the old version. You, you you know you want it to feel current. So, yeah. And and, and obviously with this live update thing, since this is a recent thing that's been going on, like, and I don't think they would, but if. If something changes on the roster where someone goes away through gulag, um, leave leave them in the game. Like don't take somebody out because they're gone. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, you get the point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that comes down to contract, and if I think the superstar already signed a contract to be in the game, they're probably going to remain in the game. But I don't know. And I'm I'm sure on on a- AWP at some point we may we may talk about these most recent releases such as Drew Gulak, but yeah. that's for another time. Yeah. Um, this next one, uh, I'm sorry to say, I really don't have a lot to say about um, an all new universe mode. We've talked about our <laughs> here here. So here's the thing, I I think what the the guy whose video it was. He talked about the fact that fans had more or less been saying, I would like either GM mode or an updated universe mode that integrated some of the features. Yeah. I don't think you need both. Right. Um, you and I kind of talked about how universe mode was sort of a shrug moment for both of us where we're like, eh, whatever, I don't care. Yeah. Um, and so the only reason I think that it would be something I would care about is if and I'm not putting this out into the universe, I'm hoping for a full-blown GM mode, but is if they go, eh, let's not go full GM mode, let's take universe mode and we'll just spruce it up. Uh, that's the only reason I would be okay with, with it. But, uh, now again, universe mode, I don't care. 
uh, GM mode will take its place if they if they roll roll out universe mode. Yeah, it's the, it's the same concept. That's the thing is, I think universe mode was poor man's GM mode. Yeah, and I think I I mentioned something about that last time was when they took out GM mode. Uh, it was almost like a calling card of yeah, we took out GM mode, but here you go, here's a treat. Um, and I think that once again, if this this Patrick Gilmore guy, I think that right now he's doing a very good job. Like he's doing what we've been wanting him to do for years, or what we've been wanting you know the game developers uh, to do for years now. Um, oh, you mean for them to give a shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so in my mind, if you have GM mode be the most wanted thing by a landslide and you don't deliver, then in my mind it's like, well, then okay, what's the point of this whole thing? Yeah, and that, that was another comment. I, I'm just going to keep referencing it because that's the only video that I've watched from somebody else about this. But that's another thing he said. He said if they don't roll out GM mode, then this that's going to cast a horrendous light on this whole process and make people go, then what the hell were we doing? Yeah, so honestly, this is just me speaking. Um, if they said we're going to give you a full GM mode, but we're going to completely take away universe mode, I'd be okay with it. I'd be like, okay, sign me up, do it, do whatever you got to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this next one here, I think, I don't know if it was last episode or it might have been the episode before that where I mentioned this, custom music. Um I took advantage of this back in WWE 13 and 2K14, where let's say if I created a superstar who was not in the game, um, you know, I, I would create them or I would download them. Um, and one of the best touches that you could do was you could um, use a little program like that. Upload you know, their actual team. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that, I, know, I, I know I did that on 12 or something. Uh, I don't remember which one I had that, that allowed that, but I did that with, like, Page, yeah. where I imported, I, I, I either made my own custom Page, or she they, she was in the game and had a, what year did she come in? She wasn't in 12, she was she came in in, uh, four, if, was she in 15 also? She was in 15, yes, as a DLC. Yeah, so whenever, whenever the hell it was, but I think I might have made a Page, and then I imported the her first theme from when she beat AJ Lee. Yeah, and it was just like you take a CD with the with the music on it, put it in, import it to your console, and then you were able to use it. Right, exactly. Um, and it's it's a very small thing, but I think that it just helps you complete uh, a created superstar. Um, or even because yeah, you you put in all that effort and that time, and you want you want all the all those those touches to be just right. Right, yeah, because I, I can't tell you how many times, let's say if I were to use, you know, even now, like on 2K19, like let's say if I'm playing as Ryback or whatever, or Tommaso Ciampa, um, mm-hmm. it, it, it kind of defeats the moment for me when I win this this um, this epic match, and all of a sudden their victory scene comes on, and their theme is uh, original theme number two, you know? Yeah, it kind of takes you out of it. <laughs> exactly, and yeah, you can always find something that's a bit close um, or, you know, same ballpark, but to have this feature in there, and I know that other video games have been doing it too, so it's not like it's something that's illegal or restricted, um, but it's a very small thing that I think that if they integrated this, again, just allowing for, like, power to the player type of thing. Um, the next one that we have here, I don't think that we touched on it last time a whole lot, but create an arena. Um, my guess is that everybody wants um, a lot more options because one thing that I noticed is that um, in 2K20, when you would uh, complete the career mode, and specifically for you, Dan, you got all the DLC packs. I don't know if you ever uh, noticed this, but... All those little side pieces on the arenas um, are not available for you to use and create an arena. It's still the generic um, cars and stone pieces. Uh, they don't give you anything that was used to create those original arenas. Um, yeah. 
And it, again, it's like that's a small thing that had you given it to the player, it would have given us a whole lot more options. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm guessing that that's what people want to see, which is why this is so high on the list. Yeah. I, I never got too, too into, into the whole Creator and Arena thing myself. But again, if you, if you up the interactivity of it and the customizability of it, I think that'll make it worth it for especially those creative, creating, uh, sorry, those creative sorts, like the ones who sit and spend hours making the superstar just right or yeah. those branching storylines for Creative Story. Right, yeah. So, I mean, again, I, I don't really spend a whole lot of time on creating an arena myself, um, but if I ever do get the urge to create an, an original arena, I want to be able to have more than, you know, 10 stone pieces or, you know, set designs uh, that are carried over from, I don't know, 2K, 16, 17, you know, I, I want new options, I want new things. Yeah, again, again, kind of like I, I know that the, further down the list, there's no WWE, uh, no 2K originals listed as an option yeah. or as a as a thing. Which I'm only I'm only a little disappointed about that because I thought it was a neat concept and I thought if they refined it, then it might be okay. No, yeah, I definitely agree. Um, again, uh, if the next rendition has to create a story in there. I'm going to spend the most time on that. But if these other create modes um, get an upgrade, uh, I think that it would be uh, it would be neat, again, to have new options and not just copy-paste, copy-paste from previous games. Yeah. Um, the next thing that we have, and Dan, I, you touched on this just a few minutes ago, uh, focus on gameplay. I'm just, again, I'm going to repeat what I've been saying this whole time. Um, your responsibility, first and foremost, before a GM mode, before a creative story mode, before any of that. It's a functional ass game. Yes, because um, it, it, it was a disaster. What we got last time was an absolute disaster. Um, things that 2K19 did perfectly, for whatever reason, the, the wheels had fallen off. Um, again, we want a fun game that does not restrict the player, um, does not slow down, uh, immensely, uh, when we're having... It isn't frustrating. You don't want to be frustrated when you're playing the game. Exactly. Um, have it be realistic... Um, but not to the point where every 20 seconds I'm dropping down to one knee. Or if I take three grapple moves and a signature that I have to roll out of the ring for 30 seconds and then, I, and then I'll get the ability to jump back in. Don't do that. Don't restrict me from having a comeback in six man or more matches. Um, give us the liberty that you gave us uh, on last generation consoles. And that sounds so outdated. But that's really how I feel is that the um, last gen games uh, gave you more freedom. And well, I mean, you also have the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that, that's, that's what it comes down to. Um, and I don't know if this, I know there was a separate category for this, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it in there because I feel like it kind of relates to gameplay. But please, for the love of God, give us back that old control scheme because this new one just didn't do it for me. I mean, my thought, uh, one of the main thoughts that I've got is that uh, get rid of, like, not get rid of, but for me personally, uh, back in the day, you didn't have a limitation on your countering. It was if your timing was right, you were you were set. Yeah. And I know you I know you could shut it off, but I would rather the default be that it's not on. And then if you want an ed, an additional challenge playing against your buddies or something, or you you're the guy who really liked the limited reversal thing, then let that be a function you can turn on. Yeah. But but for me, I. I, I always thought it was fine to not have a limitation on the reversals. It's kind of the same thing about the rolling out of the ring and the uh, 
uh, other aspects where the dropping to the knee is stamina wear down because it's a limitation. Yeah. I don't want to be limited by something I paid to play. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I also talked about this last time, the whole thing of my, uh, my energy meter needs to be in a certain location for me to hit a finisher. Um, stuff like that, they need to do away and do away pronto. Um, if, if they are, if they are hell bent on keeping that in because it adds realism, I would say, uh, give it, give it, give us an option to turn it off. Um, so that way if people want to have it on, they can. And if people don't, they can turn it off very easy. Yeah, I agree. Um, the game should be the, the the overall feel of the game should by default be sort of a sandboxy feel where it is where you can play as it like like you don't watch the show and go oh man Randy Orton's out of counters <laughs> um, you should be able to play it like you imagine that they fight yeah um, and again if you want to add uh, an additional challenge for yourself or your friends or whatever then it should be accessible to put on stamina wear down count reversal limitations, but I don't need that in my, in my default gameplay. Yeah, exactly. So my final comment on gameplay is don't have it be restrictive. I don't want to be restricted when I'm trying to play an innocent exhibition match. So, uh, moving on to the next one, and I'm trying to understand what everybody meant by this, but it says, unlock, create a superstar content. Um, Yeah, the the specific phrasing of that, I'm not sure. I assumed it meant um, having a lot of creative creative superstar parts. Yeah. I don't know if they're saying just make more available or make it so that you can unlock more than like what we have available because like the, the shirt the, sh- the the number of shirts that are available in 20 trash pants trash there's even like the logos i'm tired of those logos yeah you like, know um the little pictures haven't changed in four years yeah um again i'm just <laughs> I hate to draw back to this because it, it, it's 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 like beating a dead horse, but in two K fourteen they gave you a lot of custom designs, and yeah. then the second one I think we went to two K fifteen is when they cut back on that uh, custom logos, um, or not custom logos but like original designs. Um, you used to have like I think a hundred some odd options, but then for yeah. whatever reason now when you go and you look at it. Um, there's only like 25, um, and again, it's one of those things where if you put the time to put it in the game, why take it out? Yeah. Um, and if, and if I'm being entirely too picky, um, any costume piece that you put in the game that has a superstars logo on it should be available without the superstars logo. Yeah. Um, because there, there was, a, I think it was actually when I made, I, I think I told you I made one of my movie characters yeah. in 2019 and the jacket I gave her has the heart logo, the Bret Hart logo on the back. Yeah. And I had to like cover that up with stuff so that it was less in your face. Yeah. And my thought is just regardless of what you put in there, there should be a version that doesn't have that superstars logo on it so I can make it whatever I want. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, uh, for whatever reason, a lot of the... I mean, create a superstar... And, and obviously, on that note, sorry, I keep doing this to you. It's okay. Um, I like the create a, create a logo function. Yeah. yeah. Make sure that stays in the game, because like I, I, when I made my David S. Pumpkins from SNL, I made a pumpkin, and then I made the pumpkin four times on one logo, and then I just took that four pumpkin logo and just pasted that on him a hundred times. Yeah. But I wouldn't have been able to do that a handful of generations earlier, so that that is a really cool function to have. Yeah, certain things like that I think need to stay in the game, but again, just more options. Um, there are certain articles of clothing 
that have just been copy and pasted, copy and pasted so many times that you forget when it first originally, when, when, when the first time was that we saw that, um, which I think is okay. But as long as you keep on implementing new threads, new articles of clothing, new styles, um, so, uh, yeah, I just think that again, I think the repeating theme for all these modes is take what you had and just improve upon it. And, th- and that should, that, that should, that should satisfy everyone. Yeah. So our very last thing on our, uh, list for today is more WWE legends. Um, <laughs> and I, I, <laughs> I honestly think like I didn't even I didn't even pick up on this until I sort of read a few reviews, but two K twenty, for whatever reason, um, took out so many legends, um, yeah. and for for really like no particular reason, um, I know there was maybe one or two legends that made an appearance in AEW and that might have contributed, but there were so many other people that just innocently they were in the game in 2K19 and then for whatever reason they were taken out of 2K20. Um, do, do you have specific names? Because I, I can't recall. So, um, again, if this is an AEW thing, I don't know, but DDP wasn't in the game. Um, Bam Bam Bigelow wasn't in the game. Um, uh, Tatanka was taken out. Uh, trying to think, uh, like Rikishi was taken out, um, uh, I think Brutus Beefcake was taken out, if I'm not mistaken, um, so a lot of these guys were taken out, and I don't know, it's like, why? uh, it could be a licensing thing, in which case you can't be too mad at, at 2K for that. Like, maybe they couldn't come to a deal, or maybe the guy... I don't know. Obviously, that's conditional. Yeah. Um, but but. I, I, think there's specific, I think there's specific legends that universally should be in all of these games. Yeah, like, and, I mean, you know, the whole scandal thing that happened with Hogan, it's like, I understand... But yeah. it, it felt like it, as soon as that blew over, he should have been back. Yeah, which he was. He was in two K twenty. But again, I you had to pay for him in the nine ninety nine SmackDown twentieth yeah. anniversary thing. Um, yeah. Mick Foley again, another name who two years ago was in the games and then he was taken out. Then he was put put back in, but you had to buy him. Yeah. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to get at is that if if there is a legend who has been in the games religiously, leave them in. Unless if it's a contractual issue, okay. But something in my mind tells me that maybe they were taken out to make space for current talent. But um, I think that you can still make space for current talent if you don't have four Stings in the game and five Charlottes and four Sasha Bankses. It's like, again, we've talked about this before. Um have have slots don't have it be different um don't have you know duplicates yeah in the game. Just, just make it reskins of the same exactly person. um uh, let, let's let's play a quick mini game okay let's just burn through some names that we like i think we can probably do this pretty quick without having too much time because there are going to be names that come to mind pretty quick yeah but but like let's go through and let's each say 10 10 legends that we think should always be in a re- in a WWE game at this point. Okay, fair. Do you want me to start or do you want to start? You, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, Steve Austin. Okay. The Rock. Mm-hmm. Hogan. Yep. Are we considering Undertaker? We can. Oh. I mean, I know he's still been in all of them, but yeah, that's fine. Okay. In a, in a few years, who knows? Okay. Um, Undertaker, Ultimate Warrior... Macho Man, Roddy Piper, Andre the Giant, uh, Jake Roberts, and did I say Ted DiBiase? No. Okay, so Ted DiBiase. Yeah, and a lot of those date back to like the earlier games. Too. Yeah. 
And I'm pretty much in, in agreement with most of yours. Yeah. I'll only update a couple. Okay. Because there's there's people there's people like um, there's people like Iron Sheik that <laughs> God bless that weird son of a bitch. I don't need I don't ever need him to be in a WWE game again. <laughs> um, but at this point now we've got Edge, who I think should be in every game. Yeah. Eddie. Um, Brett. Yeah. I think should be in there. Uh. Uh, D- DDP, I think, has enough of a uh, ingrainment in wrestling lore where he should be in there. Okay. Sting. Yes. Um. Uh, yeah, I mean, you covered the majority of them. Uh, I feel like I had one other weird, weird one, but uh, yeah, you get the point. Yeah. So there's a lot. There's a lot of guys who like that's. At minimum, we said 15 people that are on your roster just every time. And that bulks up your roster, let alone. Yeah, um... And we didn't even, we didn't even mention any females. But then you've got Trish and Lita and China and, uh, Alundra and... Shit, at this point, let's throw Mae Young uh, and Moolah in. That'd be funny. (laughs) Um... Yeah, uh, and the funny thing is, too, like, God bless, um, like, the talent, but, for example, like, in 2K20, we got, um, Jackson Riker from the Forgotten Sons, um, Did but, we? Is he in there? Yeah, he's in there, but ironically, <laughs> the, o- the other two are not in there. Yeah. And, first of all, that's incomplete, and it's like, if you're not gonna have all three of them, don't have them in there at all. Um, and instead it's like, instead of putting in a Jackson Riker, I mean, again, no disrespect, I think people would much rather have, uh, a Jake Roberts in a 2K game than a, than a Jackson Riker. Yeah. You know, again, no disrespect, but it's just, if you're going off a tradition, um, but yeah, like, I think those key players that we mentioned should always be in a WWE game. Um, if they become a part of a scandal or whatever, that's a time when I would say, okay, maybe disassociate from that superstar for this current rendition of the game, but eventually put them back in, but don't make it a DLC thing. Yeah. So. And and honestly, I, at this, at this point in some of these guys, careers, I feel like they should, they should absolutely be negotiating their contracts to where they have freedom to do whatever they want, basically. Yeah. To where even if I'm in AEW, if WWE wants to put the likeness of Sting in the game, Sting's allowed to be in the game, or vice versa. I know WWE doesn't like to pl- doesn't like to share, but some t- you can't you can't win them all. Vince. Yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, like one of the major hype points for me every year is who's going to be on the roster, who's going to make the cut. Yeah. Um, And, again, it's very impressive. Like, you think about from the days when we had a a roster of 30 people, and now here we are in 2018, 19, 20, we got 100-plus superstars on the roster. Yeah, because we talked about that throughout the the Road to to 2K20 uh, thing, where we started out with, like, 60 people, and now we're at 250. (laughs) Exactly. And then you have DLC content, and that gives you a whole lot more. So it's impressive, but I just feel like sometimes when it comes to selecting who gets to make the cut... um, They make bad selections. Yeah, so I would say be very attentive this this time around on who you put and who you don't put. Um, Because like we said, there are people who... There's superstars who complete a wrestling game. Um, Imagine having the most modern wrestling game... Um, without The Rock, without a Shawn Michaels, without a Steve Austin, without a Hogan. It's like... Jeez, did we even say Shawn Michaels? No. <laughs> um, Whoops. <laughs> again, it's... it's uh, 10 is kind of a narrow number for all the legends that have, you know, come down the pike in the, in the last, you know, 30, 40 years. Yeah. But um, there's just... There's a group of people who need to be in the game and who completely... Yeah, like Ken Kennedy. Kennedy. 
Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, just I would say be attentive when it comes to roster. Choose wisely. Um, if 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 a talent has been in the WWE for a cup of coffee, maybe hold off on putting them in. Especially if yeah, you let, it, let let them make some headway before we commit to them, like uh, Kushida. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, when you think about it, even when you leave out a current talent, there is always the community creations, um, yeah. and somebody out there is doing a bang up job of of creating the talent. So. Yeah. So yeah. Um, with all that said, that concludes the first ten um, of most things that not only us but the majority of the gaming uh, WWE universe want to see. Um, in regards to into in regards to this, Dan, the the first ten that we've discussed. Do you have any parting remarks? No, I'm square. Okay. Well, with that said, we want to thank everyone who joined us. Uh, in these times, we hope that you are staying home and staying safe from everything that's going on. And so, remember guys, turn down the treble. And crank up the bass. We'll catch you guys all next time.